Volkov sort of takes his, his insides, his energy, and somehow pushes it out and some magical way through paint and brushes and however he does it, the image appears on the canvas, which we seem to know that place, that time, that emotion, that feeling, and he was able to communicate amazingly with, with his painting. Yeah, it looks like a photograph because it's perfect. And he specializes in painting scenes of things that move him. And when I watch the clients come in, they all say the same thing, you know, I've been there. I know that place, even though they don't know where it is. It's a memory that they have in their, in their body. Their body seems to remember it. I was born in Russia, Leningrad at the time, now St. Petersburg. I live and work in the United States of America. Since I came here uh, 27 years ago or so, at the last count, I think I've painted about 500 paintings. And most of it is about America. It's about the spirit of the people who live here, how I fit in with them, how I understand them, how we talk to one another. Um, it's about what drives us forward, about the youth of this nation. It's a beautiful country. I love the landscape, the continent, the people. It's, it's a beautiful place to be. At the University of St. Petersburg, we studied uh, the effects of light and crystals. And in my field of work, I was a geophysicist by my exact specification. We studied Aurora Borealis. And the actual object of my studies then was the actual footage film of Aurora Borealis by the movement of that we were supposed to learn to interpret some things. So in one way or another, I was always connected to the phenomenon of light. And maybe the hunger for it came out of that um, post-Soviet Russian existence, which didn't have a lot of light in it. Uh, yet there was a lot of subtle light in it, which is what I tried to find in the world around me. The smell of oil paint, the flexibility of it, the ability to take these elements, mix them together and create light, or an effect of water, uh, it just became so engrossing and so incredibly satisfying to produce, especially since at the time I lived in Russia where there was a lot of, uh, in a way of uh, entertainment, you know, uh, what kids do to make themselves, you know, have a good time. That was my way of having a good time. I painted copies of many artists and learned from them how to paint glass, silver, silk, from uh, Dutch Flemish artists, how to paint still lives how to paint uh, landscapes, interiors. I painted portraits of my friends and fantasies out of my head. And all of these disparate things combined into this one thing which I believe now has become me. This painting is called Keys to Everything. This is one of my favorite paintings. Um, to me, that painting is probably the most bittersweet and sentimental thing I've done. And that's about our life because we go through stages in life where so many things happen to us. We lock that little compartment where the memories from that segment of life are stored and we walk away, we continue on our path and we engage into a whole different number of things. And we put away those memories like we put them in the albums, photo albums. And sometimes we forget about them and sometimes we forget where the keys are and sometimes we find them and all of a sudden when you open the drawer and you see these old images or things like an old marble uh, or a pencil you know or a scrap of paper with some drawing in it it opens up a whole world of time and that's what that painting was about each one of those objects was used once by someone. They were tools, they were actual keys. Uh, there were things that were useful in life. Well, precision, I think, comes from that Russian school of art, um, which has always been based in realism. Uh, then, I guess it wasn't helped that I spent eight and a half years studying physics. Um, in some regards, this was probably the best place to learn anything and to learn to paint before, before anything else, you, you learn to see and understand why you do things. You can teach how to paint, you can teach anyone to draw. Uh, it's a matter of training and discipline, 
but um, the objective is not to paint, the objective is to speak to people. And uh, for me, painting is a language that I've picked up from all these various sources and have come up with my own voice, I guess, from all these others that I have listened to. I didn't have a teacher, a living teacher, who taught me how to paint. But my advantage was that I picked my own teachers. Um, who were dead or alive. They were physicists, they were artists, musicians, painters, you know, writers, and now here I am. <laughs> I believe that the most profound things in life are very, very simple. That's the ability to see light, the ability to see it within yourself, people around you, the faith in something that will, was there before you and will continue when you're no longer there. And to me, the greatest mystery is the mystery of light traveling through darkness. Because the world is dark and we can't see light without the darkness though. And so against the darkness we can see the light. But that balance between the two is where everything resides. Um, this is probably the healthiest environment for an artist to be in uh, exposures is one of the most beautiful and the biggest gallery. Marty and Diane have created a unique experiment in terms of art. Uh, this place fits this physical location so well and this part of the continent so well that, uh, like a glove, you know, the two of them are dedicated to art. Uh, they do it selflessly and with a lot of inspiration and love. And that love of art is what we all feed on and they, they help us along.